I want to focus the coming months on oscillators between 50 MHz and approximately 110 MHz. So I had to develop a, a first more or less universal oscillator that worked on all these frequencies. And this was the result finally. It's a bipolar transistor in the middle of the screen and um, you can set the working point with the potentiometer from 22k. That means that you can set the whole circuit to oscillation. I always use uh, a variable transistor to get a transistor, sorry, a variable resistor to get a transistor into its working point. And when you study my videos on YouTube, uh, you can always find it because many circuits on the internet don't work because of a not proper uh, base resistor. Here you see that the whole circuit oscillates. And when we go to these frequencies, 50 MHz up to 100 MHz, there are a lot of critical issues. Oscillators are easy to make uh, up to approximately 17 MHz, but when you go to 30 MHz, um, all becomes very critical. For instance, the wiring. This is a very sloppy circuit. In an audio amplifier this is no problem, but for such an oscillator that works on such a high frequency, all these wires here give stray capacitance and stray inductance. So the wire, for instance, from here to the coil, that's here this coil, three windings. So in fact I'm pointing out now this wire here. When this wire is too long, it becomes a part of the coil, and in fact it is already a part of the coil. Uh, that means that the frequency will go down when the wiring here is too long. Uh, that's a classical uh, theory in electronics, radio technology. And uh, that is the, so very important. So you, I found some inspiration in this book that I bought on the flea market. All the uh, connections in such a high frequency oscillator must be made in a very sturdy, strong, straight way. Here you see an example. This is the example from this circuit. This book is from approximately 1970, uh, 1937. This is the circuit. Um, it is super regenerative receiver. In fact it is an oscillator uh, that is pinched off at a certain frequency from say 20 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz and when it is pinched off that oscillator uh, it gets extremely sensitive for radio signals and that's what happens here in this circuit and my aim is to build such a circuit with this transistor circuit but anyway uh, this is the way to make such a high frequency oscillator straight thick wires. Um, it must be made in such a way as if the wiring is non-existent. So very short wires. And here that's not the case. You can see that. That means when I go with my hand to the coil, when I uh, uh, move for instance this part a little bit, you can see that the oscillation changes very much. So such a high frequency oscillator must be made in a mechanical very stable way. And
moment now I break one wire and of course the whole thing doesn't function any longer. Anyway, um, I wanted to demonstrate that with this simple uh, radio circuit I can wipe out a certain radio station on 103 megahertz. But I hope uh, you will believe me that this is possible. Of course the coil here plays a very important role in combination with the, wi with the wiring. I made a few coils. This coil for instance operated on 80 megahertz approximately. This coil here now in the middle of the screen on the frequency band from um, 80 up to 110 megahertz. And in my first experiments I had eight uh, windings on a uh, plastic uh, form from 9 milli millimeters in diameter, 1 millimeter copper. So these are the turns that you can do experiments with. Important to tell that this capacitor is critical. So uh, when the switch I have uh, drawn a switch but that's not uh, uh, completely actual. So when this capacitor is shortcut we have 68 picofarad here. When this, uh, I say capacitor, I mean yeah, when it is shortcut really, uh, when it's open uh, we have uh, a capacitance here lower than 18 picofarad. You can calculate it, but I think it's approximately 10 picofarad or so. And when it's here 10 picofarad, you can go to the higher frequencies. So when the switch is shortcut, low frequencies. When the switch is open, high frequencies. This is also an important resistor. It has to be low in this uh, uh, range, 1 to 50 ohms has all to do with the strength from the, um, the frequency that is sent out by this oscillator. This capacitor is also critical. Without this capacitor it doesn't oscillate. And also without this capacitor it doesn't oscillate too. The coil is completely experimental. You have to do some experiments and use your counter to see which frequency is generated. I have to do some soldering work. I hope that my camera and luck gives me some time to solder here one wiring, one wire, to demonstrate the oscillator in a good way. Take some time, sorry. Um, now I think um, I can't see any oscillation at the moment, but it surely works. There is some oscillation here, it's very weak. But the whole circuit surely works. Also important, when you use transistors with a normal uh, amplification, say between 30 and 100 for high F transistors, you will uh, get the situation that the coil, the tank circuit here, oscillates on the ground frequency. But when you use for instance these transistors, these are very high quality, uh, high frequency transistors with a high uh, amplification factor, you will see that the oscillator oscillates uh, strong on the second harmonic from the coil. So when this coil is 50 megahertz, you will see with these transistors that it oscillates on 100 megahertz. But at the same time it oscillates on 50 megahertz. There are harmonics, that's all that I want to tell. When you tune in your radio to say 50 megahertz or 100 megahertz, you can hear uh, that the oscillator is active. And that means it, uh, this oscillator, when it's active, 
uh, it pushes out a certain radio station on 100 megahertz or 110 megahertz. Finally, some things from this book. Very interesting book from approximately 1937, uh, as far as I could see. Bought it on a flea market. It came in handy because um, I wanted to do experiments on higher frequencies. It shows all kinds of uh, tube circuits. The transistor did not exist in those days, of course. But the best thing is the best thing is that it also shows how to make these circuits. That's very important. So even now in 2015, we have to use the same setup for such a high frequency oscillator or radio. That doesn't change. It has all to do uh, with um, the, the frequency, uh, the properties from the frequencies that we are working with. And um, that's decided by science. When we want to wor work on short frequencies, very short frequencies, the wavelength becomes very short and that also means that we work that wiring becomes critical. This is for instance a Lecher wire system. Etc. Simple linear oscillator etc etc. So when you want to do these experiments I wish you luck.